This is NASA TV. You're looking at a live view of the Dragon Endeavor spacecraft as we await its departure from the International Space Station on its way back to planet Earth. We expect Endeavor to push away from the space station at 11.05 a.m. Pacific or 19.05 GMT with our Crew-2 astronauts, including NASA astronauts Shane Kimbra and Megan McArtha, JAXA astronaut Aki Hoshide, and ESA astronaut Toma Pesquet. Once Dragon departs the station, the crew's flight home is expected to last just a little more than eight hours. About an hour and a half of that journey will be dedicated to a fly-around maneuver where the Crew-2 astronauts will make a full loop around the station to take photographs of the outside of the orbiting lab. Upon completion of the fly-around, Dragon will use its Draco engines to thrust away from the station in a series of carefully choreographed maneuvers, or four departure burns, to increase the distance between the spacecraft and the space station. Dragon will also execute a phasing burn to lower its orbit and line the spacecraft up with its landing location. Uh, the Dragon Ingress operations you can see now are underway. We're about 20 minutes to hatch closure. And then from there, it'll be about two hours until Dragon departs. Right now, what you're looking at is a camera that's positioned inside the Node 2, that's the forward module, the Harmony module, and it's pointed straight up towards the space-facing side of the International Space Station up to PMA-3, Pressurized Mating Adapter 3, now getting views inside the Dragon pilot and commander. That's uh, Shane Kimbrough and Megan MacArthur from this view. Uh, Shane Shane Kimbrough on the left, Megan MacArthur uh, on the right, already in their suits in position. Uh, they are suited up. The mission specialists will be suited up here shortly uh, as they are all getting prepped. And there you go. Hatch closure is just moments away. SpaceX copies. SpaceX Hatch copies. closure and work. Hatch closure and work. And again, that'll be... That'll be the first hatch, Dragon Hatch. That uh, Once that's closed, uh, we'll wrap up our coverage and, and allow the crew some time to close the remaining hatches, the A-pass being uh, another station hatch that creates the vestibule that would be depressurized. Uh, the part that you see Mark Van Hei in right now, that won't be depress depressurized. That's the pressurized mating adapter. But on the f towards the screen a little bit is the uh, Node 2 hatch, Node 2 Zenith, or space-facing hatch. That's the third hatch uh, that'll be closed. From there, Mark Van Hei will move over to the cupola and it'll be his job to monitor uh, Dragon's departure as well as the fly around maneuver and he'll remain in that position until uh, they exit the approach ellipsoid. Uh, there's two uh, imaginary circles around the International Space Station. One of them is the keep out sphere. Uh, they will back up, here's a fantastic graphic, back up to about uh, the keep out sphere uh, which is about uh, 180 to 220. It's going to keep within that uh, 40 or so meter range uh, and it'll essentially fly around the International Space Station going to the uh, from the zenith or the top facing to the aft or the back and then just make one uh, complete loop from 12 o'clock to 12 o'clock uh, around the International Space Station. The whole time the Dragon's nose cone will be open and they have a window at the very front. Well, the crew will be taking pictures right out the window. Uh, they'll make a full loop that'll take about an hour and a half before they do two departure burns that will send them outside the keep out sphere and the approach ellipsoid and begin the journey home. Home. It'll only be a couple of hours there, and we'll can provide continuous coverage uh, as they do those departure burns. There's also a departure phase burn uh, that allows them to shift the phasing from essentially co-elliptic with the International Space Station, or pretty much right underneath, to the phasing that allows them to line up with the primary landing zone, and that is, of course, Pensacola, Florida for today. The deorbit burn is going to be a hefty one, a 16 and a half minute burn. They'll bur fire those. Once they do that, they are committed to land and Pensacola, Florida. Hatch is closed, Endeavor. Hatch is closed. TPRV ISO valve is open. SpaceX copies. Hatch is closed and TPRV ISO valve is in the expected position.
All hooks are open and, and we nominal. have confirmation and of separation. Give her copies. Dragon has started to push itself away from the station. And with that, Shane, Megan, Aki, and Toma have completed their journey aboard the International Space Station. Station on two, Dragon separation visually confirmed. Houston copies and kickers. Endeavor copies. And we're following along as the uh, Crew Dragon Endeavor is backing away from the International Endeavor, Space Station. Endeavor, we're going to go to Waypoint, and this is their docking suits. SpaceX copies and go to one, and the MSs are doffing suits. We will transition cameras to external only if desired. Right now we're in a 50 second burn, uh, the first of four to fly around the International Space Station. This is a great view of the forward hatch. Um, of course, the nose cone is configured into the open position, as we can see, um, but we can also see the four Draco thrusters located there uh, on the forward hatch. These are what are utilized um, in order to move Dragon away from station. Those are the four larger circles um, in a rectangular shape there around the hatch.
Endeavour, SpaceX's go for the orbit entry and landing. Copy, go for the orbit entry and landing. Good news. The deorbit sequence has started right on time. So we had a confirmed claw separation and trunk separation. Dragon is now in an orientation with a forward bulkhead Dracos pointed where they need to be for this very critical burn, the deorbit burn. Uh, we've been waiting for this moment for quite some time. Uh, a lot of the departure burns that we've been following over the past couple of hours have been really in anticipation of this moment. We've been following weather all along the way. Uh, because once we start this deorbit burn, really, there's no going back. Um, that means that the dragon itself is committed uh, to return back to Earth. Drogues deployed. Confirmation. That'll slow us down from 350 miles an hour to 120 miles an hour. Dragon, video on two healthy drogues, descent rate nominal. Copy, great news. So in about 30 seconds, the main chutes are gonna come out. There are four of them, and they deploy at about 6,500 feet. Oh, Gary, look at this. This is an excellent view of the drogue uh, parachutes. Here it is. Drogue separation, main chute deploy. We'll wait for confirmation of four healthy mains. can't ask for anything better. We got confirmation of, uh, you heard on the loops there, four healthy mains. Descent rate is nominal. That means we are expecting splashdown three minutes from now. Visually, you can see one of the mains uh, taking slightly longer to inflate. Meters. The teams are uh, are tracking that as a nominal inflation rate, uh, and the descent rate is as expected. We do have four healthy mains, and we are expe expecting an on-time splashdown. Six hundred meters. We copy six. Six hundred meters. This is a better shot of those four healthy main parachutes attached to the Dragon spacecraft Endeavor as it continues to descend. Four hundred meters. The rate is as expected. Four hundred meters from splashdown. Three hundred meters. Two hundred meters brace. We copy two hundred embracing. Standing by for confirmation of splashdown. Yeah, 
SpaceX sees flash down and mains release. Copy, we heard the main. Endeavor, on behalf of SpaceX, welcome home to planet Earth. Hey, Chris. It's great to be back to planet Earth. And thanks to SAE and Jackson teams. Uh, it was an honor to represent you and work with all to our family. Look forward to seeing you soon. Splashdown confirmed at 7.33 p.m. Pacific, 10.33 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Four astronauts of Crew 2, Shane Kimbrough, Megan MacArthur, Aki Hoshide, and Thomas Pesquet now safely returned to Earth. But it looks like they have plenty of lighting. And this is the second time that this particular capsule has landed. Right. Um, so this this capsule Endeavor was used as part of the Demonstration 2 mission last year, uh, flying Bob and Doug, and it has splashed down and been recovered once before. So uh, this is not its first rodeo. Really a testament to uh, the capability of these American spacecraft that are rotating crews to and from the International Space Station as part of these expeditions. It is truly an international team. From the camera views that you're seeing right now uh, on board the Go Navigator is uh, teams representing NASA, SpaceX, European Space Agency, and the Japanese uh, Exploration, uh, Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency, all of them on board. Uh, truly an international uh, government and commercial joint effort to make something like this possible. So again, it's, it's gonna take some time. We're shooting for less than an hour to bring the Dragon uh, Endeavor onto the recovery ship and to uh, open up the hatches and egress the crew or take them out and bring them onto the medical facilities. We do have a call in from Leah Cheshire, uh, NASA Communications, who's on the GO Navigator recovery ship and was able to uh, witness the re entry and splashdown of Crew Dragon Endeavor. Leah, if you can hear me, tell us about your experience in, uh, witnessing Dragon Endeavor splashdown, uh, bringing a crew home from the International Space Station for the second time. I can only, I can hardly explain how amazing this experience has been. Right now, as you said, I'm on Go Navigator. Right now, I'm at the top. Looking forward to the fast boat, a boat, a boat, a boat, a boat towards the spacecraft. Um, we were standing on top of the helipad where we just landed at about 9 p.m. Central, or 9 p.m. Eastern time. And so we stood at the back of the helipad watching the crew members streak through the atmosphere. It truly looked like a meteor. And actually, at the exact same time we saw the crew members, we did see a meteorite in the sky. So it was an incredible moment. Um, and I was standing next to NASA astronaut Shannon Walker, who she herself just completed this journey six or seven months ago as a member of the Crew-1 uh, spacecraft and mission. And so it, it, it's been an incredible night here on Go Navigator. We can't ask for better conditions. It's uh, wonderful temperatures. The sea is very smooth and, and glassy almost. And so uh, things are just moving really smoothly here, and teams are, are executing everything necessary on the board. All right, that was Leah Cheshire on board the uh, Go Navigator recovery vessel now heading back uh, to inside the Crew Dragon. We're getting those views right over the shoulder. The crew standing by, helmet visors up, uh, really just in a waiting posture as we're uh, uh, waiting for the fast boats and the teams out there to rig the Crew Dragon Endeavor with the proper equipment to hoist it, the capsule itself up onto the Go Navigator spacecraft where you just heard uh, Leah Cheshire and the the uh, remaining recovery teams uh, are waiting uh, for, of course, the series of medical checks and, and of course, the personnel representing each of the space agencies, NASA, uh, European Space Agency, JAXA, as well as SpaceX. So you can 
to see the person that is on the capsule itself. That is the rigger. They, uh, we just got confirmation that the rigging has been completed. Uh, now they are uh, essentially um, securing the, the Dragon capsule to all of the rigging hardware that was attached to safely lift it up and out of the water and onto the recovery vessel. And we're seeing motion of the A-frame now getting into position. The rigger making the final attachments necessary. Dragon, SpaceX, brace for capsule lift. Copy, brace. There he goes, as expected, jumped into the water. His job complete, attaching the uh, all of the connection points to Crew Dragon Endeavor, making sure that it is stable as the A-frame itself, using hydraulic lifts, hoists Crew Dragon Endeavor out of the water onto that circular frame there you see at the base of uh, the ship. That is the Dragon Nest. And Gary, we are uh, in a in, in a slightly we're slightly ahead of schedule. We were expecting Dragon uh, Lift to begin at L plus thirty eight minutes. It is L plus thirty minutes now. Uh, so things con things continuing to go smoothly as part of Crew 2's uh, return and recovery. Seem to get better and more efficient with each <laughs> mission. Dragon, stand by for side hatch opening and egress. Next call will be from the recovery team. Crew 2, congratulations. Mission Control, send it off. Hey, thanks again, Chris, to you and your team. We'll see you guys soon. This is Five a views footage. inside Endeavor. Wonderful. Getting all four crew members thumbs up. They are feeling good. Live streamed from on the recovery boat. Spectacular. The first crew member being egressed from Crew Dragon Endeavor. Got witnessed some applause there from some of the recovery personnel as well. And we got confirmation that was Megan MacArthur. Uh, that was the pilot of the Crew 2 mission, the first crew member egressed from inside Crew Dragon Endeavor. Next out is uh, Commander Shane Kimbrough, outside of Crew Dragon Endeavor, being translated over to the stretcher per nominal procedure. Waves, smiles on his face. A fantastic journey, 199 days in space, splashing down on time. And here comes the third member to egress the capsule. This is Aki Hoshide.
some fist bumps and smiles from Aki. Again, after 199 days in space, returning to Earth. All crew members flashing the peace sign for crew two. I love it. And that leaves one more member inside of Dragon. That is Thomas Pesquet of the European Space Agency. And here comes Toma. the ESA doc on board, checking in with uh, Thomas Pesquet. There you go. Everybody flashing the crew to, yes, I love it. Yes. Uh, we do have Kathy Leaders, uh, who is the Associate Administrator for Space Operations uh, here at NASA. Kathy, if you can hear me, uh, your initial thoughts now that uh, uh, Crew 2 has safely returned to Earth after 199 days and what it means to NASA as a space agency. Well, I'm always amazed I can hold my breath for those last 10 minutes of reentry. You know, I mean, that is... Um, high drama right there. And like you mentioned several times, seeing those shoots come out is just an amazing thing. It is so nice to see the, that our SpaceX crew two astronauts are, have safely splashed down in the Gulf of Mexico off the coast of Florida aboard the Crew Dragon Endeavor spacecraft. And we've now completed the agency's second long duration commercial crew mission to the International Space Station. And what's it's been such a busy but exciting time aboard the station, and which is really our home in microgravity. You know, I'm so proud of the NASA and the SpaceX team for another successful return. They continue to show that amazing amount of dedication to each phase of the mission and, and just safely and methodically moving forward and conducting the mission. It's just amazing. You know, we originally were planning to launch our Crew 3 mission for a short overlap on station with Crew 2, but, you know, we ended up bringing Crew 2 home first. Um, the team really carefully balanced each decision, and as we looked at which was the safer opportunity, we decided to bring the crew home first, given the weather conditions. And as you can see tonight, they were great. Um, like people said, it was like a lake out there, a very calm lake. So. This was a, the best decision we could have made, and it was just great to see the crew exit, exiting that spacecraft this evening. You know, as you folks have talked about, the mission set a record for the longest space flight by a U.S. crewed spacecraft. The crew members were actually in their 200th flight day, um, even though they and they did complete 199 full days in orbit, which surpassed the 168 days set by SpaceX's. Um, Crew One mission earlier this year. Not that any of those crew members count. <laughs> the Crew Two mission, you know, launched April 23rd on a Falcon 9 rocket from NASA's Kennedy Space Center, and uh, and then docked to the Harmony Module's forward port of the space station on April 24th, nearly 24 hours after liftoff. You know, the the Crew Two mission has traveled over 84 million miles during the mission while their stay on orbit and completed over 3,000 orbits around the Earth. And during their time on orbit, they have contributed to a host of science and maintenance activities, scientific investigations, technology demonstrations, and multiple public engagement efforts while boarding the, um, on board the ISS vehicle. They've studied how gaseous flames behave in microgravity. And one of my favorites, as an ex-New Mexico person, grew hatched green chilies in the station's plant habitat facility and ate space tacos. They installed free-flying robotic assistants and even donned virtual reality goggles to test new methods of exercising in space, among many other scientific activities. 
And the astronauts took hundreds of pictures of Earth as part of the Crew Earth Observation Investigation, which was one of the longest running investigations aboard the space station, which contributes to tracking of natural disasters and changes to our home planet. And most importantly, they did that fly around on the way home to have us check out the, the state of the ISS one more time. They conducted four spacewalks to install, deploy, and otherwise prepare for installation of our new ISS rollout solar arrays. And they also saw the arrival of seven spacecraft to the space station and seven spacecraft departing during their six month stay. Station is the hub up there, our, our international hub. So this splashdown of Crew-2 comes just before the launch of NASA's SpaceX Crew-3 mission. I, the, the return looked spotless. I know folks will be wondering about the, that one lagging main parachute, and the team will be going off and, and looking at, um, you know, how the loading was on the chutes and understanding that behavior. It is behavior we've seen multiple times in other tests and usually happens when the lines kind of bunch up together until the aero forces kind of open up and, and spread the chutes. And the, the thing that makes me feel a little bit more confident is that the loading and the deceleration of the spacecraft all looked nominal for us, which is good news. But we're making this an exciting week for us. And you know, one of the key things we'll be doing on our launch readiness review for the Crew-3 mission coming up, we'll be working through that. That launch readiness review is tomorrow at starting at 7 p.m. And uh, my uh, OCOM colleagues would, would be kicking me under the desk right now if I didn't tell everybody we'll be doing a post launch readiness review press conference tomorrow evening at 9.30 p.m. Eastern time. So once again, thank you for watching. I can't tell you how excited I am to see all four of the crew members back on Earth, and I'm looking forward to launching another set of four this week. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kathy Leaders, uh, Associate Administrator for Space Operations here at NASA. We also have on the line Hiroshi Sasaki, Vice President and Director General for the Human Spaceflight Technology Directorate at JAXA. Uh, Mr. Sasaki, your thoughts on the successful return and the completion of the Crew-2 mission? Thank you for the introduction. Uh, first of all, on behalf of JAXA, I would like to express my heartfelt thanks to the NASA leadership, SpaceX, our international partners, ESA, CSA, Roscosmos, and all the colleagues who have devoted to the successful mission while overcoming the tough time under COVID-19. I'm really relieved that all the crew members came back home safely to us, and I do believe they have brought tremendous courage and hopes for all of us through this successful mission. Aki Hoshide served as a commander and led the Expedition 65 and 66 missions over five months. During his on-orbit stay succeeding astronaut Soichi Noguchi, Aki has completed his EVA with ESA astronaut Toma Pesuke and contributed to the upgrade of the ISS, including the installs of MLM. Aki and the entire team faced various challenges during their stay, and they have overcome with great communication among the crew members and with ground team. It proves us again with the importance of teamwork and international corporations. I'm also pleased that we JAXA, along with Aki, have conducted various activities to promote space exploration, basic research, as well as commercialization of LORAS orbit. Every time we see a successful mission like this, we are getting one step closer to achieve our common goals towards space exploration using the gateway and on the lunar surface, and also bringing further benefits to us through the utilization by the ISS. Next fall, JAXA astronaut Koichi Wakata will be on board the Crew-5. 
followed by Satoshi Furukawa's long stay mission in the coming years. I hope that the Aki's experience will be succeeded to contribute to our endeavors towards space exploration and human space flight. Once again, congratulations up to all of you the safe return and wishing the successful launch of Kudu 3. Thank you.